a while, and I want to really, really encourage you um, to dig into this because this is really vital to your life with God, and your life with God then is vital what? To your family. And then your life with God is what? Vital to everybody around you, to your friends, all your relationships. Everything that you do, this is vital to. Because if you can hear from God, man, it takes all the junk out of your life. And the more I hear from God, the clearer it gets, and we'll get into it a little bit today, the more that old man falls away. And so we've got a lot of things that we think are right or we think are good, uh, but it's just an old way of thinking. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Come on, man, I got off and quiet. We've got a, we get a stuck in a way of thinking. Yes, we do. For instance, you know, we've got this way of thinking that God's going to move this way. Well, he's got a million different ways he can move. That's right. But we've only seen one way, so we think that is the way. No, that's just one of many. Come on, there's a lot of different flows to the Holy Ghost. And so because you've had one flow in your life, doesn't mean you wouldn't want to have another one. And you know, I found out that he wants to do fresh things all the time. And if it's not fresh, then you fall into the same old, same old. You expect to hear the same old, same old way. You expect the same old, same old results. Come on. Man, I want to get a God result every time. And I want it to be different every time. You know, in the Word, it talks about that the angels circle the throne. And I listened to this guy, said he went to heaven. I love those stories. You know, there's not a lot in the Word about heaven because I think if there was, people would be jumping out of windows. But I mean, it's just that good. <laughs> But he's, he talked about the fact that, you know, for eternity, they just circle the throne. And when they go around, they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, you read that and you think, well, that's got to be eternity doing the same thing. And he said, you just hit, see the phrase, holy, holy, holy. He said, but when you see it, they come around, they see something they've never seen before mm-hmm. for eternity. You can't exhaust God. And he said, so the expression on their face isn't just holy, holy, holy. It's holy, oh, it's like holy. <laughs> wow. They haven't seen that before. That's how big our God is. And he's that big in you. And he's that big in your life that he wants to show you different streams and different flows and different ways to do things. So we can't be in the same old, same old. Well, it's just church. Here we go. No, you can't get up every day. Well, it's just the mundane. No, the mundane, I can be living for God and watch. There's something in this day. That's why he says he's hidden something in every day for us. He daily loads us with benefits. Well, they're not always the same benefits. Well, three of you. God bless the rest of you. Here we go. If you got your Bibles, go ahead and go with me. You know where we're going, Ephesians. If you don't, we haven't been here very long. I know last week was Easter, so we took it. Man, everybody came for Easter and didn't show back up. I was hoping they'd come back. (laughs) Thankful for the ones that did. Amen. Boy, you guys. Come on, man. We got one amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Always stop there. You have a work of the ministry. You do the work of the ministry. We've always called somebody a minister. You are a minister. That's right. The five-fold ministry gift is not to be worshipped. I'll say it again. Amen. The five-fold ministry gift is not to be worshipped. The Bible talks about honor those who labor among you. I get that. That's, that's for you to do, not for them to tell you to do. <laughs> there you go. Oh, come on, man. It's not for, you know, it's like saying, you need to respect me. Well, how about you give some respect? Maybe you get some back. If you want somebody to be loyal, you be loyal. What's the word say? If you want a friend, be friendly. You got to be my friend. (laughs) That's what that sounds like. If you want to be committed, people to be committed to you, you be committed to them. But when you do it, don't expect it back. You just be that person. Because what God's created you to be then will attract what you need. You don't have to do it. You don't have to try to do it. You don't have to try to be it. You just be who God called you to be, and you be all the things that he's told you to be. The rest of it takes care of itself. Well, this five-fold ministry deal is just there to strum things on the inside of you to do what you're called to do. Well, three of you. God, I'm not preaching on that, so I'll keep moving, since it bothers so many of you. 
I know we've grown up in the age of, you know, we, 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 those guys. No, those guys aren't anything different than you. Those guys are the same. Some of them aren't as good as you. Trust me. <laughs> oh, I can say a lot of stuff and I won't. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ, we're supposed to be edifying and building up, not tearing down. We're supposed to be telling people the things that they got. Now, if you're in my circle, meaning that we're close, and I see you're doing something stupid, I'm saying, hey, dumb dumb. That's, that's, that's my given because I have that place. I've had people approach me that didn't have that place and try to correct me. I was like, hey, 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 thanks for coming. Because you don't know, and I'm not, now I, everybody that says something, I'll, I'll go to the Lord, not, you know, all that, but I mean, repeatedly tell me, well, you're not this, and you know, you need to do this, and you need to do this. Well, I'm not called to do that. I'll give you one, since you're looking at me funny. A guy came up and said, man, this so-and-so's got this prison ministry. Man, that's awesome. Well, why don't you have one? He said, no, God hadn't called us to that. I said, if you want to do one, I'll pray with you. I'll believe with you. You know, if we're supposed to give to it, we'll give to it. Oh, no, no, no. I just, well, okay, well, I'm no, 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 too. Not that it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's just not what we're called to. You got to be what God's called you to be. Yes. You guys still here? Yes. So we, to, for the work of the, or for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man or full grown, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's our goal. Our goal is to be the same, walk, the, walk the earth exactly the same way Jesus did. That's right. Only better. Why do you say better? Because the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened. He, had, he operated under an inferior covenant. Now once he did what he did, we have a new and better covenant. That's why the word says not to think of any our sufficiency as being from ourselves, but our sufficiencies from God who made us sufficient ministers of what? The new covenant. Yes. Why do you think Jesus said same things I did, you'll do, and greater? Because we've got a better covenant. We've got more authority. We've, he, he conquered everything and gave it to us. Covered that a little bit last week. He took care of all the stuff, that was all the obstacles, and gave us the job of just enforcing what he already did. So now we've got this great, great opportunity, and we forget who we are most of the time. And we let things speak to us louder than God speaks to us. We let circumstance speak to us. We let jobs speak to us. We let the, the political environment speak to us. We let the, all the stuff in the media speak to us. But yet we've got a God who's got a loud voice on the inside of us. Yeah. And he's given us the spirit of truth yeah. who leads us and guides us in all truth. So you know, well, this is what's right. Yeah. Yeah. So for instance, you know, my biggest frustration when they had the big, you know, uh, the big monster that came out a couple of years ago with the COVID deal, my big deal was who's to tell me the truth? This guy says this, this guy says this, this guy says this. And I remember one day I was just driving, I was like, Lord, I don't even know what to believe. He said, yeah, you do, because you got me. So I won't condemn anybody, but I wasn't wearing a mask. <laughs> Some of that might have been a little bit of rebellion. You know, you can go to that. Um, <laughs> go to the airport and they'd say, Got to wear a mask, but if you're eating something. So Jake and I, went, we were going somewhere, and I bought a bag, bag of popcorn. And I put that little thing on the one side and ate it one kernel at a time. And there was a lady sitting in front of me. You could tell that she was not probably agreeing with me, and she kept going. Remember? And I went. Like this. Anyway, might have been a little flesh. I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit. The perfect measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be what? Children. Tossed to and fro and carried around with every doc doctrine, with the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness, evil plotting. Man. Then we talked about, we're not going to turn there. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. It said, It is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And the Barclay translation is my favorite, and this says, God put in you the desire and the power to achieve his purpose that he has planned for you. So God's got a purpose in your life. God's got a plan for your life. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 2 chapter 10, we go through this all the time, but it says that what? You're his workmanship. You're his masterpiece. 
You're his Mona Lisa, one translation says. Created in Christ Jesus beforehand, or for good works of which he prepared beforehand that you should walk in. Well, what is it? It's a God work. That good work is a God work. Come on. We've, here's where we have a problem. See, we, we try to separate a God work from just the world work. Well, what you do in the world is probably going to be a God work. You guys out there? If, you're, if you've got a gift in something, it's going to show up. And you know what? It's going to be in the world, but it's going to be a God deal. And so whatever you do, you say, well, I'm just working at Burger King. Well, guess what? If you're working at Burger King, there's going to be a God work on the inside of you for that job. And there's going to be something that you do that touches people. There will be a line when you get to heaven. Man, you prayed over that, uh, that uh, double whopper. Come on, man. And I ate that double whopper and everything that was bad in my life left and the eyes came open to Jesus and that's how I got born again because God will reveal how it happened. Man, I was, I was sick in my body, but you, you gave me that extra fry. Come on, man, you don't, you don't know how big God is in you if you're not thinking that way. The whatever your job is, you've got a God work in you for that thing. So whatever it is, everything, you have to find favor in what you do because it's a God work. Well, I'm just out here by myself digging a ditch. Well, you don't know what God work that is. That's right. And who you, because you come in contact with somebody at some point. Three of you, God bless the rest of you. Thanks for coming. But it's God who puts it in you. God puts it in you. Then we went on to talk about the fact that in Hebrews chapter five, you know, you should be, you should be teachers by now or you should be revelators by now, but you're, you need somebody to teach you. The first principles are oracles of God. And that the, you're drinking milk, but full, you know, maturity belongs to those who are what? A full age. Those who by reason of use. And then the Stevens translation, verse 14, says, but the deeper mysteries of our Father are appreciated only by the mature Christian who is trained in discriminating between what is useful and what is worthless. Man, I love that. So what's he saying? When you know that you're right with God, you start to hear from God. If you still are under the influence of, of the fact that you're just a sinner, but you're saved by grace, you're not going to have a relationship with God. Because you're always going to come in groveling, God, I'm sorry. God, I know I'm worthless. God, I know. No, you didn't. You're not worthless. No, right. Because of what Jesus did, he made you worthy. Right. right? You've been made worthy. Why? Because I'm right with God. I've been made right. That's what righteous means. Right. I've been made right with him. I've been made righteous. I, I can't be worthless and be righteous at the same time. I can't be worthless and be righteous at the same. I can't have one thing and be the other. So you may have been a sinner, but thank God I'm saved by grace. That's who I am now. I've been saved by his grace. So now saved by his grace, why do you go through this all the time? Because you can't have a relationship if you don't know who you are. If you don't know who your father is and who you are in relationship to him, you'll have a surface, re you'll only go so far. When my kids lived in my house, they didn't have to ask to open the refrigerator. They didn't have to ask if they could come in. They do now because they don't live there. Get a ask from the pub teaser. They lived there. They didn't have to ask if they could sleep in their bed. They didn't have to ask for these simple things. And yet whenever you don't know who you are in relationship to God, you're asking for stuff he's already freely given you. You're worried about things that he gave you authority over. God, if I could just open that refrigerator. Golly. Thanks for coming. Here we go. John chapter 16. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus blessed the bed that I lay on. You know, I sang with my kids. I put my kids to bed every night when they were little. Probably till they were, I don't know, how were you? 23? I don't know. <laughs> And we'd always sing, you know, we'd sing certain songs and they were awesome. And then I sang a couple that were just fun. And, you know, Whistle Britches, he got it. But man, my daughter, she thinks, she still thought all her friends laugh at her like it was stupid. I'm like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't what we sung so much as that we hung out. Right? And I, I, I get, we used to sing a Bob Will song, Daddy's Little Fatty. Um, I get that would maybe be weird. 
way over in the Indian Nation, rode my pony on the reservation, Oklahoma. You know, I wanted to make sure that I got them indoctrinated in the fact of you're a citizen of heaven, but you this is this is pretty much where the yeah. <laughs> in a in a correct way. John chapter sixteen, verse twelve. Jesus talking. It's in red. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. Now, now, now remember, when any time you're reading the Gospels, you're not reading you're not reading the New Covenant. So these guys aren't born again, filled with the Holy Ghost yet. So he's telling them, look, I got a lot of stuff to tell you, but you can't handle this because you're in the natural and there's no way you're going to get it because it's so spiritual. I know you've been hanging out with them, you've got some spiritual stuff, but, but you don't have this yet. So you can't handle what I'm going to tell you. So I can't tell you yet. So watch this. However, verse 13, when he, the spirit of truth, thank God we got the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority, but he will, whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Man, I love knowing what's up. I love knowing what's coming. I've told you this and told you this and told you this and told you this. But you've got a God on the inside of you that will tell you and he'll get you ready. And he'll prepare you for certain things. So I'll never forget, we were looking, uh, we were looking for a house. When we first got married, we lived on the golf course by the maintenance barn. It was awesome. It was free. Free is good. Especially when you first get married, you don't have two nickels to rub together. Free was awesome. So we're living there for free. And we, but the Lord told me, stirred me a long time before, several months before, find someplace else to live. I'm like, my flesh is going, I don't want to find any place to live. This is free. And I bet you if I go somewhere else, it's going to cost me some money, right? But he kept telling me that, so we did, and we were. And so one day I go to work, and I get a call. They said they wanted to see you upstairs, and the Lord tell, told me, I've prepared you for this. They're going to ask you to leave, and they're nervous about it. And I'm walking up there, so tell them what your plan is. So I go up, walk up the stairs. And I said, hey, whatever you want to talk to me about, can I talk to you first? And the guy was like, yeah. Club manager, and he was kind of a sheepish guy anyway. And I said, Hey, man, we really, really, really appreciate the fact that we've been able to live there and all that. You know, it's just been a great blessing to us just getting married and all that. But we are actively looking, we're trying to find a place to go. Um, so I just wanted to tell you that we won't be there that much longer. Um, but thank you. And he went, Oh, <laughs> that's what I needed to talk to you about because you know, we can't pay this other guy any more money, but we need, so we're going to, I said, that's fine, good, we're good. Man, he was all happy, and you know, he even kind of hugged me a little bit. You know, when the guy kind of hugs you, you think, well, but anyway, because <laughs> it did something. Well, what's your point? Got the spirit of truth. Yeah. Got the spirit of truth. Got you ready. Got you, leads you and guides you in all truth. He shows you things to come. Yep. Watch this. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will speak, not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will what? Speak to you, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, he will declare and take of mine and declare it to you. So the Holy Ghost is always telling you what the Father has. And what he has for you. He's going to tell you that desire that God put in you, the gift that you are. He's going to explain that to you. And sometimes it's revealed little by little by little by little. Why? Why does he reveal it that way? Why does he do that? Because he just doesn't want to tell you the whole truth? No, because you'd screw it up. Exactly. Most of the time if God said, here's where you're going, I'd just go there. Yeah. But he wanted you to go over here and then back over here. And then he wanted you to hit here. Then he wanted, why? Because he's preparing you for such a time as that. He's getting you ready. He's getting you in a place. God, okay. I grew up, um, how do I say this? I grew up playing sports. And so I had this attitude um, how do I get, of entitlement. I'm a pretty good athlete. I wasn't good. That's your mindset, okay? If I was good, I'd, you'd have heard of me. 
and you didn't hear of me. I thought I was, you know, the older you get, the better you were. Well, the older I get, the more I was like, yeah, you know, I thought I was something. I really wasn't very good. Anyway, I mean, I ran like a waterfall. Yeah, there's a lot of bad things. Anyway, but there's this mindset of, I work hard, I do this hard, I do this hard, I do this hard, so I need this. And then you go to college and you're doing that, and there is a certain amount of, because it is, it's different. You're different than just somebody that goes to school because you're actually doing something besides that. And so there is some perks that go with it. Don't look at me like that. So if I would have gone straight out of what I was into ministry, I'd have been like all the guys with bad hair. You need to serve me. You need to take care of me. You want a prophet's reward? Give me a drink of water. Give me a reward. Something will happen for you. But instead, I went to work. So everybody comes up to me. I think I'm called to ministry. What should I do? Get a job. Get a good job. A service job. Where you're having to do what they tell you to do. And you're standing behind a counter listening to everybody just and learn how to handle that. It'll get you ready. Because you're going to think you're something. And you think you preach your brains out. And they're going to come up and go... And there's people that are going to watch you online and they're going to critique everything you do. God doesn't wear a tie. That guy said that the Gospels are the Old Covenant. <laughs> Ask me how much I care about that now. No. You guys still here? I don't care. <laughs> well, what does that do? See, that job prepared me. Well, if he had told me this is what I want you to do, go straight into ministry, I'd gone straight into ministry and be a knucklehead. Come on. Oh, I'll give you one that's not even me. Not even about me. This is awesome, though. Jerry Chalk will be here in a little bit. Doc led him to the Lord when he's in eighth grade. Well, you guys know the story, all that. Everybody told him to go to college. Everybody. Doc said, you have to go to school. And he said, well, the Lord told me to go to Ukraine. He said, I don't care what he told you. You're not hearing right. I was sitting there at lunch when it happened. Jerry can testify to this. So he listened, didn't listen to all the wise counsel. He went straight with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he went over there and didn't even know the language. And he'll tell you as, as when he left here in Owasso, Oklahoma, he wasn't very good at English. <laughs> He's standing in a bread line in Ukraine because he doesn't have any money and doesn't speak the language. And they almost killed him. They got roughed up. Because you're an American, you're standing in our bread line from a wealthy country, what do you, and you don't even, I mean, they, they hammered him. Supernaturally learned the language, and the rest is history. Came back, and I was talking to him a couple years ago. I was like, man, that was, boy, so it's just what God told me. He said, God revealed later, he said, you would have gone to college, you'd have met a girl, you'd have got married, you'd have had a bill, You'd have had this, you'd have had this, you'd have had responsibilities. You would have never done any of this. I had to take you when you were reckless and abandoned. He'll be here in a few weeks. You can ask him, I ain't lying. You guys still here? First Corinthians. I oh, know, it's all been reviewed so far. Well, we, had, we, we got off topic last week. It's a good topic, but we went on topic. First Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Verse 9 again. But it is as it is written, ear is not seen or ear heard, eye is not seen or ear heard, entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Again, that's old covenant. Verse 10. But God, thank God for God, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So remember, the, he said, Jesus said, he's going to send the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, He's not going to speak of his own authority. He's going to speak what? On what he sees, what he gets from the throne. He's going to speak from heaven. He's going to speak for the Father. He's going to reveal everything that Jesus has. So what's your faith in? Your faith is in what? What Jesus did. I've been crucified with Christ, no longer I that live, but God is Christ who lives in me. 
And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by what? Faith in the Son of God. So my faith's in Jesus. My, you got born again by your faith being in Jesus. Every, your faith is always in what he's already done. He's already made you more than a conqueror. He's already made you a child of the king. So you need to know, number one, I'm his child. I'm of his DNA. Not your flesh, but you were born again. So you when your spirit, he killed the old man, resurrected a new man, spirit's alive to God. Full of God. Same way Jesus was, 100% God, 100% man. Your spirit's 100% God. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things. One translation says the deep and bottomless things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? So no one knows the things of God except what? The spirit of God. I'm going to get into this if I got time today, but your flesh doesn't know this. Your flesh doesn't get this. God has never been quiet with you about you or your situation. Never. I'm convinced that most of my stuff in my life is because I had a certain mindset, so I didn't really go to God with it. Just thought I was right. Whether it was my religious education, the way I was brought up, the region of the country I live, whatever it is, I had a mindset. And I had that mindset and I stayed in that mindset. And whenever I got out of that, wait a minute, God only contacts you through your spirit. He'll use stuff. Yeah, you see that, blah, blah, blah. But he contacts you through your spirit. Well, if I'm trying to hear God in my flesh, it isn't going to happen. And if I've already got blinders on and so I don't hear what he's saying, because I've got a certain way I look at it, it's never going to be reality to me. I don't know if you're hearing me. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man that's in him? So no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world. Uh Uh-oh. We haven't received the Spirit of the world. We didn't receive the Spirit of the world. What is your flesh? Spirit of the world. When they're talking about a disease, and they're blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I don't know what to believe. And you go, well, you've got the Spirit of truth. Go with what to believe. Oh. Yeah, I don't have to worry about what you guys say. All I got to do is listen to him. You guys still here? We're not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Well, what's been freely given? Oh, boy, there's a bunch of stuff. I'll tell you one of the things. There's a lot of stuff. But one, number one thing I want to hone in this morning, and I'm going to continue on this for a while, is your authority. You got a name that's above every name that every name, everything that's mentioned has to bow to that name. Once they name it and label it, you win. They'd be better off going, we don't know what it is. Don't know what to call it. But once you give it a name, now you got what? Authority over that. Well, I know I got authority. I know my authority works so far. What do you mean? I don't know. I, don't, I know that I can use, I, can, I, can, I can't use my authority for you. I can use my authority when you're in my presence and things on you. I've, had, I've done it over and over and over. Hey, that demon thing that you're working in, it ain't going to be working with me. It has to sit outside. I told you too many stories about that. I do it all the time. Well, I'll give you one. Given a golf lesson one time, and this is, this is 20-something years ago, and something kept going around in me. I mean, the hour before I had this guy, I'm in another lesson, but something kept going around in me. I won't say what it is. It just kept going off and kept going off and kept going off. And when that guy showed up, I turned around and said, there it is. And it was unclean and it was filthy and it was all this stuff. So I just said, hey. And I said it right out because he was a ways away. So I said it out loud because he couldn't hear me. That thing that's been rolling in me that's on him, you know, rolling in me, it was God telling me. Mm-hmm. If you want to ask me later, I'll tell you what it is. Not that. What he's doing is bad. He kept rolling in me. And so I said, you have to wait over there. You can't come over here. This guy can come see me, but you can't. Come on. He got there, and 
10 minutes in, he goes, wow. Had nothing to do with the golf lesson because the guy was horrible. <laughs> it was awful, man. Uh, you know, everybody gets better, but he didn't get better. But no, I'm teasing, he did. He went, wow. And I knew exactly what the wow was. The wow was, I'm free. I, and all I said was, wow. I said, yeah, it wasn't because he hit it good. I said, it feels good, doesn't it? He goes, it feels amazing. I knew what he meant. He knew I knew what he meant. Come on, man. But the little fellow was waiting over there when he left. But he can't be there. So I know my authority works that far. I know my authority works with my brothers. Didn't work past that. Meaning I could, you know, I'll give you one. No, I won't. See me later. If you really want to. I told you about one brother, I got another brother. I got I got brothers. <laughs> I told you about the, yeah, I told you about the one that you know fell off the deal and stuff. The other one was supposed to die once, and I was gonna let him die. I'll tell it, I guess I'm telling it. So mom <laughs> said, You need to go talk to him. I said, I'm not talking to him. I was mad. So he's in there and he's in the hospital, and I sit down and say, hey, Bro, I said, I don't really care. I'm only doing this because mom asked me to. <laughs> but you ain't going to die this time. You better buckle it up because I'm tired of watching her because of what you're doing. He did for a long time. Amen. That's your authority. You can't control anybody, but you can kick stuff off of them. Come on, man. Then what they do with it's up to them. You guys still here? For what man knows that you received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in the words which man's wisdom searches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual to spiritual. So this wisdom that we have from God doesn't make sense to the world. That doesn't make sense that if somebody punched you, you don't punch them back, you pray for them and watch what happens. When somebody is mean and nasty to you, you thank God for the gift that they are because you're going to learn how to deal with this. When somebody comes at you a certain way, it makes no sense to the world's wisdom. I'll give you another one. It makes no sense to the world. I've told you this and told you this. When I got fired once and this and this and this, we lost two-thirds of our income. The guy did our taxes and said, how did you eat? I said, I got more stuff now than I did at the beginning of the, of the year. He goes, I know. How did you eat? And he was, he was a Christian. I said, I'm not Baptist. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I did say that because he was Baptist. Anyway, and I love him. He's awesome. I'm not bad because I got a God who says he'll supply all my needs. So it's not about me. It's about I'm not the provider. He's the provider. He'll give you opportunities, but it's not my job to do it. My job is to do what he tells me to do. He's the provider. He's the one. Well, give this away. Give this away. Give I don't want to give it away. It makes no sense. It's not wisdom to the world. You're giving stuff away. Yeah, because I it's just got to be seed because I can't eat it. I've got a great wife who... I knew it was wearing her out because, you know, everybody, she, she said it was. Because she looks at the, you know, she looks at it. I don't even look at it. I say free. Because, well, the only reason we do it that way is some one of us is really organized. And one of us is not. One of us is fun. Oh, no, I'm teasing. Oh, <laughs> She's just organized, man. I told you this before, Jesse's four. I put some of the ketchup back up. And she goes, you put that in wrong. I said, what do you mean? The label's the wrong way. So watch this. <laughs> you can't have that. Anyway. Oh, fun one. Oh, fun one. That was. <laughs> She's awesome because I had knew what the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, some money came in and we didn't have any. He said, well, that doesn't meet the, I mean, I need thousands. This is hundreds. So give it away. I said, okay. She goes, well, we can. I said, don't give it away. Huh? Yeah, we're, gonna, we're giving it away. Let's pray about where we're, supposed to, where we're supposed to sow it. This happened repeatedly. That was a couple hundred bucks, and it was 500 bucks. That wasn't too hard. When you got $1,000, it was like, uh, 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 uh. That might take care of this. He said, yeah, you need thousands. That's what he kept telling me. That isn't it. So I did it. 
Kept giving it away. I could tell it was grinding her, but she kept going with it. Then when that guy gave me 10 grand, I was like, huh. he said, yeah, you, you can keep this one. You needed to get through the winter. I've told this story before, though your flesh still works. I go to my mom's, got out of Sunday afternoon, got out of the car. I was like, Lord said, you need to give this away out of that 10 grand. I was like, what? I just did all this. See? See how we put it on us? I didn't know. I was just obedient. I didn't do anything. He did everything. But he's so gracious. I was like, come on, Lord, give that away. You know this is what we need to, this is what we need to make the nut through the winter. So I just gave you 10. You don't think I can get you some more? Good point. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual to spiritual. Boy, I got a lot more to say. I'm out of time. You're comparing spiritual to spiritual, not spiritual to natural. Come on, man. For every spiritual law, there's a natural law. So you can look in the natural and see certain things happen in gravity. It's a natural law. There's a spiritual law to that too. Come on. There's a spiritual, so the spiritual comes first. The Bible says the natural comes first, meaning that you did something in the natural, then the spiritual kicks in. That's how you got born again. You believed in your heart, confessed with your mouth, you moved in. So I got to do something in this realm. I can't sit on the couch and go, oh, spiritual one. I'm a spiritual one. Watch what, no, you got to get moving. You got to put one, you got to, you, as my buddy used to say, I said, where are you going? He said, how are you getting there? He said, pat and bend, pat your feet, bend your knees. You got to move. But when you move, you're guided. When you got to, if he tells you to give, you got to give. You can't just sit there and say, well, I'll just hang on to it till some more comes. No, there's an action to that. But there's a spiritual side and we compare spiritual to spiritual, not spiritual to natural. The spiritual's first. I listen to God and then I act. I'm always moving in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes if he ever tells you to stand still, it's always a warning. Don't move. It's a warning. Other than that, you're always moving. Come on. Come on. Those that wait upon the Lord. Well, that's, that doesn't mean like that. It means to serve. It means like a waiter. Those who wait upon the Lord, I'm doing something. I'm moving. I'm getting stuff. They will what? They'll be renewed. Close your eyes, bow your heads.